Soil Water Conservation District's annual speech contest. My name is Nancy Pennington, and I'm the office manager for the Soil and Water Conservation Districts in Lake County. And um, for those of you who are, who are not so familiar with the Soil and Water Conservation Districts, we have 45 districts in the state of Oregon. We have two in Lake County, and um, we are not a government agency. Um, we are known as a local unit of government or a subdivision of the state. And we are uh, under the Oregon Department of Agriculture. And they provide funding for us to operate. Um, we provide technical assist assistance to landowners and we work with federal and state agencies uh, for the purpose of managing and um, enhancing our natural resources. Uh, we also provide grant funds to landowners to do projects with, and we do education. And we believe in educating our young people about our natural resources. And uh, part of, that's part of the district's uh, mission. Um, we also provide workshops for our landowners uh, so that they can get an education about natural resources. We believe that it's important for our young people to learn about our natural resources, not just in the state, but in our county, what we have and, and what, they're, what they're here for and why they're important. Uh, one of the ways that we do that is by doing this annual speech contest. And uh, every year we get um, a theme from the National Association of Conservation Districts out of Washington, D.C. And so this year's theme is Local Heroes, Your Hardworking Pollinators. So the kids got to learn about pollinators this year, and they learned what they are and their habitat and why they're important and how to protect them. And we had uh, uh, Colleen Withers, who is a uh, rancher in Paisley, and she's also a teacher, and she's also the educator for the watershed coordinators here in Lake County, who we work with. And she came into the classroom and she did a presentation to the students on pollinators. And she's not here today, but I want to give her a big thank you for doing that. And I think that the kids enjoy uh, her presentation. Um, and she prepared them to be able to write their speeches. Um, so now we're going to get started. Um, and each student has developed their own speech around that theme. Um, it ha they have to cite a local example about pollinators in the county. And their speeches will be between three and five minutes long. And they're going to be introduced by number. And then after they're all done, then the uh, judges will um, tally up their scores and we'll introduce all the kids and then we'll tell you who the three winners are. Have you ever wondered why, when you go to the store and get your favorite fruit or vegetable, why it's not there? Now most of us have probably think it was the person in front of you who to it first. Have you ever thought that it could be because the pollinators are supposed to pollinate our fruits and vegetables are dying off? Because of this, farmers may not have fruits and vegetables to send to farm. The honeybee pollination process begins with the honeybee growing up against the anther of the flower. Anther is a pollen bearing part of the male flower. After the pollen sticks to the body of the bee, it then flies to a different flower and drops the pollen into the female stigma. The pollen travels down the stylus into the ovaries. This is the process of pollination. Now, there are several hypotheses as to why it is disappearing. Diet, bee pests, parasites, pathogens, and seeds are all factors to the bee climate. The other reasons relate to their environment and food resources. Their environment is affected by humans cutting down suitable trees for them to make their hives more wild. We cut down these trees to make shopping malls, public buildings, and homes for ourselves. Although this may not be a big factor to the decline in the honeybee population, it's definitely not a big situation. Also, pasture for agriculture use like sheep and cattle are often not good competes. Livestock could be destructed from their food resources. Now, it's all right to keep livestock on pasture if the vegetation doesn't attract bees. 
These are only just the theories why the bees are disappearing, not the absolute reasons why. When we peer at the big areas of forest for creating things that we take for granted, like halls and public buildings, the bees will lose their home and they will leave the area in search for another place to live. If we want the decline to stop, we need to take action now. For example, in February, Kelly House reported in the Oregonian that the Oregon Department of Agriculture has been used of several insecticides because there are things to be that up. Now, we can't all do something that big, but we all can make a difference. We can start by planting local flowers that are needed to our area. We need to plant flowers that are bees, especially when. Most of us have birdhouses flying around. We could use these as shelters for the bees. It's not just the honeybees disappear either. The butterfly, ants, moths, eels, birds, flies, wind, bats, and the wind are all followers. Now, they're not all disappearing, although living in Lake County, we often wish the wind would disappear. But they could if we don't change our actions. When using pesticides, make sure you're not overdoing it. If you don't understand bees, that's okay. Obviously, I would just take a big bowl. None of us like to get some, but especially if we have allergies, it can be life threatening. Please, let's give the bees a chance. We all hate those pesky bees that are always flying around us. But once they sting us, their stinger falls out and dies. Stingers like their life or death for If one lands on you, don't panic. It's not purposely going to hurt you. Brush it off that one with Linton. The topics I've covered for you are the process of pollination, the thoughts of why the honey is disappeared, and what we humans can do to stop the decline. The honey pollinates 80% of crops and wildlands. We desperately need these pollinators. Only 11 states have reported they've been unaffected, according to the website for the issues Alabama, Nevada, Arizona, Kansas, New Mexico, Louisiana, West Virginia, Maryland. Delaware, Maine, and Nebraska. Therefore, 39 states are in danger. As you can see, between the 80% colony dial and the fact that 39 states are currently in danger, the American consumer, or anyone that eats food grown in America, should be concerned about the decline in the honeybee population. Are you concerned? Because you should be. My favorite type of pollinators are flying pollinators. We need them because they are important. They help us out with a few different things, like our food, flowers, and they also help farmers out with their crops, too. Bees and hummingbirds are two major flying pollinators. They help us pollinate flowers and crops so we can get our food. Bees are the master pollinators, as we call them. There are 20,000 species of bees worldwide. Just in Oregon, there are 51 species of bees. Most of Oregon's native bees don't live in hives. The bees job is to go plant to plant, put the pollen off the anther, which is the male part of the flower, rub it all off onto the stigma, which is the female part of the flower, so reproduction can start. They spend most of their life collecting pollen for plants and for their skin. Did you know that the queen bee of the hive only mates with males from different colonies? Flowers are the first step in making food. It starts off with a little sprout, then the flower starts to form, and out of that becomes our food. Pollinators pollinate 75% of all flowers worldwide. Some pollinators, like the bee, visit flowers in search of food, mates, materials, and shelter. Daytime flowers are usually brightly colored and emit sweet leaves. Some daytime pollinators are bees, hummingbirds, wasps, butterflies, sunbirds, and ants. Nighttime flowers bloom at night, which are usually paler in color and give up a strong odor. Some nighttime pollinators are bats, moths, beetles, flies, ants, and birds. The most common flying pollinator is the hummingbird. Hummingbirds can't walk or hop, 
to why that church they can only see the sacrifice. All the neighbors help in the process of making food. They help on it 600 fields of 41 crops, which include fruits, nuts, seeds, and pop. Without their help as a nation, we the world wouldn't have any apples, almonds, blueberries, cherries, avocados, and so much more different kinds of foods. We can help them get stronger by planting more flowers, by buying local organic foods from farmers, or not using chemicals and pesticides on lawns, and so much more. Did you know that the world would start to death within four years if we had no pollinators? Quite a few people and farmers now realize how important pollinators really are. Now that they realize the importance of pollinators and how they can benefit our surroundings, from the flowers in our gardens to the cots that we grow our food, we can help in the survival of the pollinators. I know that without pollinators, the world wouldn't have any food, flowers, or crops. Young black insects that you crush without thinking? Well, to be, it's a pollinator. Do you know that that one bee, because I could have visited 100,000 plants that one day, the top would also could pollinate when they get it to the market. So that's why I'm going to tell you about the crops that these pollinate here in Southern North. In Southern North, they pollinate anything from vegetables, like carrots, and fruit trees, like apple trees. They also fall in nutrient-rich plants, which are good for our livestock. Since they're so amazing, they have made a red flow production saver number one in the world. According to pollinators.com, 75% of crops pay on fall. So that's why I'm going to tell you about why these are important. In Southern Oregon, they all made uh, close to 100 plants. Referenced by honeybeebags.com, $29 billion of crops are pollinated. And that means if there's no pollinators, farmers can go out of business. And that's not good. And that's a real issue here in Oregon in the United States. Because if bee population drops, then farmers and beekeepers will go out of business. Since they dropped so much, there's a higher unemployment rate in the United States. It, it makes for a bad economy, and also the prices on vegetables and fruits go up. So that's why these are important here in Oregon. Since the bee population has dropped so much, some beekeepers import bees from Europe. So after telling you about bees dying, I have some interesting facts to tell you. Did you know that there's 20,000 different bees around the world? And in those bees, you can find viruses. Around the world, there's 12 different viruses found in bees. That just shows you how interesting bees are. In Lake County, our main production is bees. So we don't depend on bees as much as places like California. In California, they depend on bees heavily because they grow more vegetables and fruits. So before you kill that yellow and black insect running around, just remember how important they are and how much trouble they are. Like Albert Einstein said, when the bees disappear off the surface of the globe, Man only has four more years left. No more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more man. So now that you've heard from me and Albert Einstein, think before you can kill that yellow and black and send bus to Everyone knows about the pollinators of the day, but very few people know about the pollinators of the night. Some nocturnal pollinators are certain moths and bats. Locally, in Lake County and Clemens County, we have some moths that pollinate our flowers that live in the Although we do not have any bat pollinators locally, 
We still need to know about them because they are very important. Not many people actually know how the process of pollination works. First, we need to know how pollination works before we can talk about pollen. The anther, or male part of the flower, has a pollen. And when a pollinator flies by or lands on the flower, the pollen sticks to tiny hairs on the bottom. After that, the pollen is transferred from the anther to the stigma, or female part of the flower. Fertilization takes place once the pollen gets to the ovules of the flower. After that, a seed is formed as an embryo. Once the seed is formed and a new plant is born, the plant puts the seed inside a fruit for protection and nutrients. Once the fruit is made, a, a human or animal comes along, eats the fruit, and drops the seed, the process resets. Everyone knows about bats, but very few people know that bats are pollinated because they come out of night. Bats are very important for tropical and desert climates. Also, bats pollinate over 300 species of fruit, including bananas, mangoes, and guava. The guava plant and saguaro plant depend on bats because they only open at night and while bats are out feeding and getting angry. The common use for the model plant is to make tequila. Bats typically visit flowers that are large in size, about one to three and a half inches big. Very fragrant, are pale or white in color, and that coat is the food for very sweet. Some examples of nectar feeding bats are the lesser long nosed bat and the Mexican long tongue bat. Both are on the endangered species list. Another nocturnal pollinator that we don't know much about are moths. Moths also like flowers that are pale and white in color, are in clusters, and are ample for deeply hidden nectar producers. Some examples of ample nectar producers are morning glory, gardenia, the yucca plant, and the tobacco plant. One local species of moths we have in Lake County, in Santa County, is the yucca moth. The yucca moth depends on the yucca plant to lay to it, while the plant depends on the moth to be pollen. Nocturnal pollinators are extremely important because without them, our fruits and flowers that open at night would not exist. I hope you will learn a little bit about pollination through bats and moths. What's the big deal about pollinators? Pollination and pollinators make a huge impact on the entire world. Without pollination or pollinators, we would not be here. So today, I'm going to be talking about pollination, pollinators, and why it is so darn important. So, what's the big deal about pollination anyways? Well, pollination is the process by which pollen is transferred from the anthers, the male part, to the stigma, the female part, of flowering plants. This process I'm going to tell you about is absolutely amazing. It begins when pollen is put into the stigma of a flower by a pollinator. <coughs> the pollen goes down the stem and into the ovaries and makes an embryo. The embryo is in the middle of the seed. The seed is in the middle, or yeah, is in the middle of the fruit or plant. The seed is put into the ground and the proper hair becomes a plant. This process is so important because it makes one third of the food that we eat. Next, I'm going to be talking about pollinators. There are two main groups of pollinators in the entire world, the wind and the animal, of course. I bet you're wondering how wind is a pollen, right? Well, when the wind blows, it scatters pollen everywhere, so it definitely gets around. 
Next we have our next. Next we have our, our big player, the animals. Some animal players are birds, beetles, moths, flies, butterflies, ants, and bats. But that is only a partial list. One specific animal player I want to point out is the bee. Bees are the master pollinators everywhere. So why is this time I'm telling myself right anyhow? Well, every three bites of food we consume, it can take one pollinator. Metaphorically, pollen is in every single bite that we take. If it wasn't for pollinators, we wouldn't have our local wildflowers, such as common arrows, rabbit and sagebrush, larkspurs, elephant headflowers, and so much more. Pollinators from all over the U.S. help make fruits such as strawberries, blueberries, apples, peaches, watermelon, etc. And vegetables such as pumpkins and cucumbers. Pollinators all over the United States also help with our <coughs> beef and dairy industries because they help pollinate the beef, or I mean the hay, clover, and alfalfa that our cows eat. Pollinators are responsible for other things, such as cotton, almonds, chocolate, and vanilla, to name a few. So next time you eat something, remember it's from a pollinator. And without pollination, or pollinator, we would not be able to live over four years on the earth. But now, you should know why pollinators and pollination is so important. My favorite quote that I have learned from studying pollination and pollinators is that a single bee has set you in place. And that is part of the problem because most of what comes from nature is free. Because it's not invoiced, because it's not priced, because it is not traded in markets, we tend to ignore it by a scientist named Kevin. So next time you see a pollinator, remember how important one little creature is. So if bees were to disappear, then humans would die for four years. Why are only bees disappeared? Most importantly, are humans to be blamed for To understand these questions and help to know how, when bee disappearance first started, colony collapse disorder, and finally, we you and I can be the public bees. Bee disappearance started around the mid to late 1900s. The first reports of bee disappearance were in France, after France and the United States. Over the past 10 years, honeybee disappearance has started to become a major problem. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, the highest year for honeybee disappearance was in 2006, where an estimated 32% of 64 million of United States honeybees were lost to CCD from the colony collapse disorder. Colony collapse disorder is when the honeybee hive feels completely gone. There will be no people dead on or around the hives. Queen bee will be one of the last bees to leave the hive. Unlike usual, the queen bee will be one of the first to leave the hive in five years. Kelly has an article near Joe. Organ banned use of bee killing insecticides for many years. These insecticides are banned because they're linked to seven major bee dives in Oregon since June of 2003. With 50,000 bees dropped dead in the Wilson Bowl County Supermarket parking lot after workers spread insecticides at the bees. That means the word of bee dives are not referred to the label. That means, even though the insecticide can be spread, there is still harm to bees. Some theories about bee dives are cell phones, habitat loss, disease, radiation, who, in my personal opinion, are insecticides for the cause of bee dives. One way to help prevent the death of bees is to not kill them every time you see them. Don't go out and spray your beehive in your backyard with an insecticide to kill it. You can also go out and plant flower and vegetable gardens. If you do plant flower and vegetable gardens, make sure they are native to your region. Some native plants to consider are sunflowers, lavenders, and sagebrush. One other way is to buy fruits and vegetables through local farms. Bees are what they call the massive pollinators. They call them this because they pollinate over 70% of American commercial crops. So we've got the best, what would be the big impact? It's pretty simple. 
Vida started to make a call for me to do a better step. It is my role that you understand when we discuss our start, calling classes on the street and finally for you and I to get help please. is what everyone says, but why should we? I mean, what's the huge deal about it? I'm going to tell you a very fascinating story that might persuade you to like pollinators just a little bit more. Pollinators work very hard to do their jobs. In a way, they're sort of like you. They set out, do whatever they need to during the day, and then return home. The thing you need to know is our bee population has decreased 25% in the last 25 years. So since 1990, we have lost a fourth of our bees. I know that you're still thinking that it's not a big deal, and I'm just wasting your time, but this is actually a major problem. Because if pollinators don't survive, then we don't survive. Think of it this way. Say all the pollinators in the world disappeared tomorrow. In 2019, the human race would disappear. It is said that when it takes four years without a lot of pollinators, for seven billion people be wiped out, wiped out. Every three bites you take, one of them is because of your local pollinators. So remember that next time you're drinking that yummy smoothie or eating that fine chocolate cake. Pollinators pollinate thirty billion dollars worth of crops in the U.S. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Pollinators are pretty close to you right as we speak. The flowers are starting to bloom, the weather is getting warmer, and pollinators are ready to pollinate. Pollinators pollinate basically just to save your life, because again, without food, we would starve to death. There is a huge problem right now. Pollinators are disappearing. Things are taking place that are very harmful to our local pollinators. Examples are pesticides, habitat loss, pathogens, and some believe global warming. We need to take control. What can we do for our local You can not bother. The number one right reason why people get stuck is because of who they're bothering our cold neighbors. They work hard and are not the bad guys. Another thing we can do is plant the flowers. Examples are roses, tulips, milkweed, butterfly leaves, etc. The number one reason why pollinators are disappearing is because we aren't doing anything. Pollinators, pollinators are going away because you do not care. If we deserve to live, then the pollinators should be able to, too. It does not take much time to help a local pollinator. We as people should feel the need to help our local pollinators. If you do your part, and I'll do my part, that's when more pollinators say. My favorite quote over researching this project is, be the change you wish to see in the world. I'd like to be that change, and I hope you would too. If we could come together, we could change the world and help all pollinators. During this speech, I hope it's impacted your thoughts on our local pollinators. Thanks for listening to my speech, and just remember, pollinators are worth saving. the human race, or any other species would cease to exist. Today I'm going to talk to you about the elite five pollinators of Lake County. The elite five pollinators from five to one are the wind, the hummingbirds, the butterflies and moths, flies, and honeybees. On the countdown from five to one, we're going to say. Five is the wind. The wind is not a living being, so it won't disappear, like many other pollinators. The wind pollinates the plain jade, or unspectacular, flowers, trees, and grasses. People underestimate the power of the wind because it is not a living being. But the wind can send seeds and pollen for miles and miles. For number four, the hummingbird. The hummingbird is attracted to the beautiful and sweet smell of blossoming flowers all over the town. But people don't understand that the hummingbirds are slowly going in nature. People don't take their hummingbird feeders down by the recommended time of September 1st. Let's say your hummingbird feeder ends in the summer. Then they'll start their late migration back to Mexico. On their way, they will find a hummingbird flowers in the 
Number three, and is the butterflies and moths. They feed just a half of the nectar in flowers, so it's hard for them to be as elite as the butterflies. But the butterflies are attracted to neon and bright flowers that attract that connect their attention. So number two is the fly. The fly right next to the bee is the master colony. It is much like the bee, except it is not as social, such as it doesn't have nests, colonies, or a queen pot, like the bee. For number one is the honey bee. The honey bee is known as the master pollinator. It pollinates the unspectacular and beautiful flowers all over the world. The bee has colonies, nests, queen bees, but people don't, many people don't understand that the bees are soon going in danger. One of the theories is the colony collapse disorder, also known as CCD. Colony collapse disorder is the leaving of worker bees and leaving only a few bee, a few eggs, and some honey. According to local Lakeview wildlife biologist Craig Foster, we would not be able to sustain life properly because we would have food, furniture, housing, clothing, or even our animals. Now you know who helps us and how they work. Now, most importantly, you need to know how to help them. You can start by taking your feeder, coming your feeders down by the recommended time of September 1st. It can be as simple as drilling a few holes into a nearby piece of wood to create a home and nest for your local honeybees. We all love the hybrid exotic flowers that you can buy from the store, but, but try planting the native local flowers that the pollinators are used to. So, using a little pesticide is okay, but using too much is harmful for your local pollinators. You now know who helps us, how to help, and how you can help them. It is your choice if you're willing to help them. Now if you're willing, now if you're willing will you please stand and raise your hand? Please repeat out. I say your name. Outside of citizen science programs. 
There are many simple actions that you all can take to help out your local lawmakers. You can start by not using harmful insecticides. Instead, you can use simple homemade remedies like soap and water to clear out pests like aphids and not harm pollinators. You can also grow native plants in your garden, such as black eyed Susans, cactus plants, and elderberries. These flowering plants will attract native pollinators to your backyards. You can even build bird, bat, and even bee boxes to put in your yards. This way, it will attract some native pollinators, such as the orchard basin bee, which is also native to Lake County. It's a great pollinator of fruit trees and gardens. You can also you can build these boxes with simple paper tubes and mud, or simple pans of mud to help them build their nests. But most importantly of all, everyone here should spread the word. That way, your neighborhood and maybe even your whole town can become pollinator friendly. With your aid, we can help bring our local pollinators back. According to Oregon's agriculture, over 75% of Lake County's crop is because of pollination. As you can see, we really need pollination. Some things that need pollination are livestock, agriculture, commercial crop, and home businesses. Surprisingly, we can help with pollination too. Everybody in Lake County likes a favorite barbecue. It's at the Juicy Burger. We all love this only here because of pollination. Pollination makes grass, cows eat grass, and we eat cows. The cycle goes on and on. We also use the plant animals for work. Your show rabbit is only here because of pollination. We also have pets. One of the main ingredients in the little pork cows food is corn and wheat. Pollination begins when a pollinator comes up to a flock. A honeybee, which is a type of pollinator, is looking for nectar. The pollen rubs off the anther, the mouth pollen of the flower, onto the bee. The bee flies to another flower, and the pollen rubs off the bee onto the stigma, the female part. The pollen rubs down the pistils into the ovaries, then fertilization, and an embryo forms, and seaweeds fruit to protect itself. In Lake County, we can grow raspberries, grapes, blueberries, blackberries, plums, pears, peaches, apricots, apples, and many more. According to soil and water conservation, 99% of those fruits found in the is because of pollination. Pollination impacts over 35% of the world's crop. No matter how small Lake County is, we're still part of that crop to grow. Lake County is famous for its cow country and the hay we grow. If you didn't already know, we can grow alfalfa, grass hay, oats and barley. We can only grow that with pollination. If more hay equals more money, the more pollination equals more hay, which equals more money. Pollination also helps with the rejection of oxygen. Pollination makes trees, trees, and trees to intervene the tasks. If the environment is unstable, pollination is released, and pollination will stop. Then all of Lakeview, then all of Lake County will be like your slave. Dry. And every time the wind blows, the soil moves, and you can never grow anything there. Lake County will be a desert. There are multiple ways as we, as much all of us as a community, can prevent that. First, don't use pesticides. Pesty bugs are a small price to pay for the balance of nature. Back to those pesty bugs who try to kill the pesticides, and all reality will kill the bats. Second, find out where the bees live, then keep your livestock and pets around in the colonies. Also, plant native. Those pretty little animals may smell good and look nice, but they left out the nectar, which is what the bees are looking for. Another way to grow the local farmers' market is to plant pollinators with organic foods. Finally, plant different kinds of food because pollinators have food with all your ground. In conclusion, I believe that it's important to have pollination in Lake County. I prove that to you from livestock, agriculture, commercial crop, and home businesses. Now you know how to keep pollination going. We need pollination to survive. We are going to pick the top three winners. They will receive a, uh, a certificate.
They will also receive a $10 gift certificate at Polar Bear. And the first place winner receives a $100 check, the second place $75, and the third place $50. I do not have checks here today. We have a gift certificate for that, and I will mail them or bring them over to the class and give them out. So, the third place winner is Rihanna Blair. The second place winner is Dahlia.